Good morning. I want to offer a video about fear, sadness, jealousy, anger, hate, any of the negative emotions and give an explanation from a um, conscious point of view about what's happening and why they occur and also to relate personally to them uh, as my videos have been expressing if you've watched any of them I'm <clears throat> having um, pretty rapid awakenings lately after a long period of finding myself exploring awareness consciousness non-duality out of originally being at a somewhat of a breaking point with anxiety and depression years ago but it doesn't mean that those uh, experiences don't still visit me and <clears throat> you know I'll start by offering the disclaimer that looking at the background and where I'm at most people would say you have no reason to feel sad about anything and <laughs> I would agree with them uh, I feel very blessed and privileged to be where I am here in Venice Beach, California. Um, but, <clears throat> you know, being human ain't easy. And so in the spirit of how I like to offer, you know, the teachings that come through me, <clears throat> and I guess I shouldn't say I, but rather the knowledge that comes through the vehicle of my body um, and I should, you know, I guess to, to offer more explanation to that, you know, anything that we think, say, speak or do is not our own. It's part of the whole. There's only one here in all of the universe, there, wherever you are, it's all one connected thing. And so no thoughts are your own. Um, no expressions are your own. Nothing that you do in your life is your own. Um, though it feels that way, it seems that way, and can be very compelling to believe that, you know, you're responsible for it, and <clears throat> you make decisions, and it seems like everything that you do has to do with who you are as a person, but there's a force much greater than you that's activating all of that, and uh, it's been decided long ago how things would go for you in your life, me and mine, and everyone else in theirs. And the world's waking up to this slowly, <clears throat> but my hope is that the message gets put out and, and explained in a way that much more society will um, awaken to it because it'll reduce a lot of conflict when we stop blaming people for their actions and understand that they're actually just playing out a part in a enormous theatrical performance <clears throat> called life. And that even when they do things that seem, you know, quote unquote, bad or conflicting, challenging, that they're a choice that we've made collectively to have them do that. And that they actually provide lots of opportunity and benefit for us, whether it's through contrast to create, you know, the existence of varying things. Like there's a quote that Ram Dass says, the hippies make the cops, the cops make the hippies. Without the cops, you wouldn't have the hippies to show up and in, in sort of like be the antithesis of the cops and vice versa. Obviously there's much more to it than that. That's a pretty black and white statement. But the point is, is that contrast is created by people being different. Um, they also provide opportunity for change. You know, some of the most beneficial things that come out of life come from being in pain, come from getting hurt, come from being traumatized, results by, um, you know, you being oppressed and then having to find the strength to work through it and to heal and to overcome and then offer the gifts of that, um, you know, those accomplishments to others. And it all, it all kind of goes back to the point of, this all being a dream and an illusion that we're going through a journey, the hero's journey in many cases, where you know we have to climb mountains and go through adversity and overcome difficulty and eventually you know reach the prize at the other end. None of that's actually happening. 
since there's only one, the prize is right here all the time, always. But because we divide ourselves into an infinite multiplicity, uh, that's the experience we have and we love it. And it's a beautiful experience in an infinite number of ways for an infinite number of, well, maybe not an infinite number of people, but really an infinite number of people. And I know this is sort of trailing off from talking about negative emotions, I'm getting there. But, you know, one of the things that was dawning on me this morning <clears throat> in my morning meditation was that, you know, the mind is infinite. It has no bounds, no limits. It can do anything infinitely and immediately outside of time. So the mind can present a person to you who has a story, a history, so much detail, infinite detail. The mind can imagine the Beatles in a split second and all of their hit albums and their fans and everything. I mean, the mind has no boundaries, no limits. So you can have an encounter with someone and begin to realize that uh, the mind is able to stir that up and give so much color to it um, in a split second. And that's you doing that. And it's, it's almost, you know, hard to fathom that you went from thinking you were a human to realizing the actual power that you possess it takes time to integrate that and to come to it. And so, you know, in the process, there's negative feelings. Um, there's negative experiences and, and negative is, you know, a subjective or relative, um, comment because really what you have here is neutrality nothing is negative or positive everything is neutral and life becomes very happy and blissful and divine when you remove the treatment of meaning that we give to it when you stop you know saying this means that this happens so that means that I should feel like this and this wasn't fair and I I lost this and I gained that and you know, these people are like this and they're not thinking about me and da 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 and this is, we, we, we love to jump into this, or the, the ego rather, loves to jump into the victim game. As long as it has an opportunity to be a victim, it gets to hang around. But when you stop giving meaning to the world, there's really no thinking left. And this is why the teachings um, point you towards cessation of thinking. Because thinking is divisive. <clears throat> and so, what happens with negative emotions is basically negative emotions are the product of incomplete thinking. We are complete. We're not lacking anything. Everything is whole always. But we dream that we're incomplete, which allows us to go on a journey, which allows us to be a human, which allows us to you know, experience separateness. But none of that actually happens. We're just dreaming it. But because of incomplete thinking, then we have thoughts of lack, like we're lacking something. Thoughts of inequity, things aren't fair. Things aren't equal. Um, thoughts of uh, threats, thoughts of you know fear that somebody could hurt us, <clears throat> that we could lose our life, that we could lose a limb, that we could lose our stuff. Um, <clears throat> thoughts of you know somebody doing us wrong, somebody cutting us off, or saying something mean about us, criticizing us making fun of us, hurting us. And those things can and do occur in the dream. Well, not, of course they do, the thoughts do, but you can also get hurt, you can lose things, you can you know, get robbed, you can get beat up, you can even die. But what we're all awakening to is that you actually can't. <laughs> you don't die, you don't lose anything, but in the dream you do, and it's part of the game that we're playing. And once you awaken to it, then you don't give a shit if you lose. You don't get, give a shit if you get hurt. You don't give a shit if you die. And actually what happens is because your energy starts to go through a shift, your overall demeanor, your overall connectedness to the whole, you, you really wind up you know, setting yourself up for a healthier, safer experience. Um, but again, you decided long ago, we all decided long ago how it was gonna go for each of us. So that doesn't mean that you get out of dying. It doesn't mean you get out of cancer. Some of the greatest sages died of cancer, but they understand that there is no death ultimately. There's no tr death truly, just in the dream. And so what happens with, with negative emotions is, is you have incomplete thoughts, like that person over there has a life that I don't have, or they're doing things that I, I, 
I don't get to do or I haven't got a chance to do. So I'm jealous of them. I feel sorry for myself that my life hasn't amounted to something and blah, blah, blah. And then in comes these feelings of sadness and uh, depression eventually, potentially. Um, you know, those people over there are a different color and they seem loud and, you know, like based on what I know about, you know, their culture or their behavior, they seem dangerous to me and I could get hurt. And so I'm afraid and I need to go hide and get the heck away from them. And it's not as though you shouldn't listen to these feelings or do, you know, do whatever actions occur because of them, because you're not actually, not actually doing them anyway. So it's mostly just about removing the guilt and shame for playing out your part in the dream. If you're afraid, that's a relevant feeling, but you can now know, or, you know, not just via me, but whoever, whatever path you're on, you're starting to learn that it's just because you're having an incomplete thought. You're thinking the ego, you know, thought is thinking that something's not safe and you're identified with it and you can alleviate yourself of a lot of the suffering by realizing that you're not, you're not, the, that is not your identity. Those are just thoughts that are being had and you allow the body to kind of do what it does, but the body will settle down immensely once it starts to awaken to the fact that it's connected with everything. If you think about it, if you're one with everything, how can anything hurt you? You're not, you're not the body over here and the world over there and other people over there. You're the whole thing. So nothing can hurt you because you're just one with it. But to, to reach that place takes, you know, a, a breakthrough, an awakening, a, um, a series of efforts um, and you can oscillate like I do I oscillate I mean I, I and I think I, I imagine most do it's like in order to participate in life you have to take take sort of the the seed of humanity of being a human and then you you know feel and experience all the things that you do as a human but when you drop back into the self the source awareness uh, you recognize that you're actually aware of and, and sort of in dreaming the movie of everything. So what other feelings? Um, anxiety, you know, anxiety is just fear. There's just worry. Um, and anxiety can crop up unexplained. It can, it can appear in you and you can all of a sudden start to feel it and, and you're not quite sure why it's there. You can't think of anything in particular that triggered you. Maybe you can, but you know, Again, it's not yours. These are these are energies, and energy is a word, but it's it's the way we explain. You know the the mind makes this this huge palette of of um, phenomena, and then when the phenomena interacts with itself, it, it creates all kinds of vibration and and feeling and experiences and changes and you know, explosions and creations, it creates and it destroys. And this is constantly going on in the dream. And, and so we're feeling the, you know, the reverberations of it all the time. And, uh, you know, so if, if there's anxiety, like, I mean, y you could literally argue that it's, it's past life stuff. Um, you know, it's, it's energy coming from who knows where it could, you could have, you could have picked up, picked it up off of somebody at a coffee shop. Um, and then more likely than not, you probably have a bunch of thoughts around like the life you're supposed to lead and the things you're supposed to do and the conditioning you have, um, that makes you think like, you know, Oh God, I got to make sure I pay all my bills and don't lose my job and don't upset my parents and, you know, don't upset my partner and, uh, you know, don't, don't get sick. The pandemic brought up a ton of anxiety for everybody. Um, you know, and it's all incomplete thinking. It's all thoughts that we're lacking something or we could lose something. And so then the side effect of that is feelings of fear and anxiety and depression and jealousy and anger and hate. And they're not wrong or bad, but they're worth understanding and knowing that they're actually not true. They are actually complete. And the more you meditate on it, the more you contemplate on it, the more self-inquiry you do, the more effort you give to training your mind to snap out of its 
um, seduction. It's been, been seduced by these thoughts and it grabs onto these thoughts and, and thinks, oh, I'm these. Even though I'm imagining everything, I'm just these. And then you suffer. But when you are able to start letting go of them and start waking your mind up to the fact that you're not those, that those appear in you, but so do all the happy thoughts. What ends up happening is that ultimately because you're complete, your nature is to be complete, you're naturally happy. When you remove thinking, happiness just is. Bliss is, peace is, there's no disturbance there. The mind is what disturbs. The water on the ocean, like it is right now, gets very flat and calm when there's no thinking. But as soon as the thinking starts to happen, then the waves and the vibration and all the shit starts to occur. It's not a bad thing. And you live forever anyway, but your, your body doesn't live forever, but you, awareness, is eternal. And so uh, what you can do though, while you're you know, incarnate in, in your body, using your body to navigate yourself, to, to see the, the universe experience itself through you, is to work on calming and quieting your thoughts. Work on recognizing your thoughts, just watching your thoughts. You know, that's an incomplete thought. Not gonna grab onto that one, not gonna make a big deal out of it. Oh, I'm having a thought about how, <clears throat> I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to pay a bill. Just to see the thought, but not grab onto it and turn a whole big story into it. Because I know that ultimately in the infinite, the bill's already paid. Everything's taken care of. Nothing's ever been undone. Nothing's ever been owed. Nothing's ever been lost, nothing's ever lacking. It's all there. The mind is just dreaming up infinitely all kinds of scenarios of lack and incompletion. But it's just dreams, it's not real. And at the same time, you know, you're still doing life and you still do have to pay those bills and you still do have to, you know, take care of that stuff. But whatever happens with you, is out of your control it isn't it isn't your responsibility and most people will get really upset by that sentiment um you know I, I i think that like i'm really i'm really working to try to not like believe thinking that i'm exposing myself to adversity by by making those statements but i know that there's the potential for that because most people have been conditioned deeply to believe that you know it's up to them and then they better not fail, which is a really fucking tall order. And it's a really stressful thing to fulfill and it's impossible to fulfill. You can't not fail as a human. Humans fail, that's it. We may, we may get it best about a hundred years and then we fail. And you know, we, 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 we can have all kinds of success and accolades and then just be miserable because of it. Or we can do very little and maybe be happy, but then everybody's like, shame on you for being a loser and not accomplishing anything. It's an, it's an inevitable fail. But when you can see that it's just a game, <clears throat> see that it's just a dream, don't take it seriously when people say stuff to you. I mean, like, you know, even my comment about that is like, I gotta, I gotta work on my own fear of like, you know, don't worry because I'm speaking truth if some people, aren't at the place where they're ready to hear that and think that I'm a whack job and want to, you know, tell me about it. Um, because whatever's meant to happen to me is meant to happen to me and I'm not going to change it. Uh, because, because what energies have gathered together to create Andrew and, and his life and all the occurrences in it have done so on a trajectory of, you know, an infinite chain of events that I'm not going to just suddenly stop despite a lot of people saying and thinking that you can. It can, it can feel that way, it can appear that way, it can seem like you can, but um, you know, ultimately, if you investigate into this deep enough and you really believe in non-duality, that there's not two, then that wouldn't even make sense logically. Um, and so what you wind up then doing is, is going like, I'm just gonna live this life that's that's being that's appearing for me, and I'm gonna try to, you know, be present, be very present. Because when you're present, you're not thinking. Thinking involves using the past. In order to think, you have to use memory. You'll never think a thought that isn't about something that, you know, relates to things you already know, 
and then you try to imagine the unknown, but you can't ever really imagine the unknown. You can imagine things, but ultimately, you know, the, the, the future, the next moment is always unknown. And what you want to, you know, help your mind with is to fall in love with the unknown. Once you have gotten to a point where your mind calms down and the water is, is flat and the thinking is less, and the way you do that is by just watching the thoughts. And every time you watch a thought, you just notice it, but don't grab onto it. It has nothing, it, 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 it can't survive. The thought's like a cloud, it just, it just drops. But if you feed it and you give it energy and you keep thinking about it and thinking about it and turn it into a story, then it sticks around and grows into something else. Energy goes where attention, or no, and energy grows where attention goes or something like that. Uh, and so you watch the thoughts and just watch them. And after a while, the mind will just calm down and, and eventually it'll just fall right back into source. It just dissolves into source. And then there's just unalloyed happiness. That's what Robert Adams will say. There's just unalloyed happiness, like unlimited happiness is your nature. Peace, bliss, no meaning. You just look at all this and go, holy shit, look at this. Look at this dream I'm in. I don't need to, you know, I don't need to really think about it and give it meaning and worry about it. Just be here. But easier said than done <laughs> with all that we encounter as a human. So, um, you know, when you're having, when you know you're having fear, anxiety, depression, jealousy, anger, hatred, sadness, those are just incomplete thoughts. That's all that that is. And you can just acknowledge them as incomplete thoughts. Like, okay, these are incomplete thoughts. They're not bad. I don't need to run away from them if they're happening. I'm not trying to get rid of them, but I'm not gonna feed them either. I'm just gonna watch them go, okay, there's an incomplete thought there. And you, you know, you, you wanna honor the feelings. You're not trying to repress or resist them because that, that which we resist persists. So you, you know, allow them, notice them, but fold them in. Remember that you're infinite and you're whole and complete. So if you feel a feeling, go, you're with me. You're gonna, st you can stay here, but I'm not gonna feed you. I'm gonna put my attention over here on the palm trees, not on the sadness. Sadness can sit there and eventually it'll just dissolve. It might take a few days, it might take a few weeks, a few months, a few years sometimes. But your job is just to enjoy because it's all morphing and changing constantly. And you ain't stopping that. You don't want to stop that. The only way to stop that is to freeze. <laughs> and I've had experiences of that and it's nice, but eventually the nature, the essence of God is to move, is to change, is to morph, is to dream. None of it's actually moving, changing, morphing, but it's just dreaming that it is. So I hope that was insightful and helpful. Um, it's a bit of a ramble, but uh, it's what came to me this morning. So uh, share your comments, give me a like if you like it, give me a thumbs down if you don't, and I'll look forward to catching up with you soon. Peace.